In the springtime, a young man's fancy likely turns to thoughts of, well, many things. Anything, in fact, that'll make him forget the long, hard winter and think of all the fun and good times that lie ahead. Get burned news. Lazy as a fat sow in the summertime. says. Well, it was awfully nice of you to show up. Yeah, would you go to sleep on your cozy little seat and fall off on the ground? Yeah, them mules remind me so much of you, too. I just didn't want to keep their company no longer. Very funny, but what happened to the rest of the poles? Oh, dad burn it, they fell off of that wagon when the mules bolted forward. I was down there trying to roll it through the mud, and dad burn mules, mud, and snow. Yeah, well, we're tired of hungry steers and green wood. And I'm sick and tired of you two moaning and groaning, so let's finish stacking these poles. What's the matter with you two? And post too heavy for you? Why don't you watch where you're going? No, 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 no. He did it on purpose. What are you talking about? All right, that's about enough. Joe, if you're looking for a fight, you're going to find it. Look, now we ain't got time. There's too much work to do. Now start picking those things up and watch it this time. Adam, you stay out of this. Besides, where you get off telling me what to do anyhow? Because I'm older than you are and smarter. Oh, look. Cos is right. It's none of your business. Stay out of it. Oh, you're pushing. All right. <laughs> okay, you wish. Oh, oh, torque is fun, huh? Oh, Because you've got mountains around here made of silver doesn't mean I am. For fifteen dollars? For Pete's sake, you want the thing or don't you? Well, springs aren't much good. Let's not mention the harness. Look at the rim on that wheel. It's almost worn through. I'll replace it for three dollars. Three dollars? All right, all right. I told you, forget about this. I'll give you a good price on a brand new one. Pshaw, a hundred dollars to take a man from one place to another. A fool and his money are soon parted. Tell you what it will do.
do, though. I'll give you $30 for the whole rate, and that includes that nag. Including the horse? Pitiful creature. You ought to shoot him out of pure kindness. All right, sir, all right, take it. And may the theft lie easy on your conscience. <laughs> Bozeman stacking timber. Secure it for a new branding pen. Nothing ruins a place like neglect. Well, as I said, the boys are building a new one. It's been a hard winter. The snow's been especially heavy this year. It's a good thing to get a head start on the spring. You know, the early bird catches, catches the worm. worm. I know, I know. I wonder where those boys are. I'm anxious to meet your boys, Benjamin. Yeah. I haven't seen them since they were children. They must be big men now. Yeah, they are. Great oaks from the little acorn. They're yeah, three fine boys, Jed. Hard workers and good head on their shoulders. They're close to each other as brothers should be. She pulled, Gray! Ah, pulled off! She pulled! If you knew the hole was right here, why'd you back it in so far for? Why didn't you say something? Because you didn't ask me, older brother. Now, why don't you stop arguing and start pushing? That's the smartest thing that's been said today. Yeah! Pull! Get up! Pull! She pull! She pull! She pull! She What's the matter? My foot is smashed. That's what's the matter. Uh, you satisfied? Uh, here, let me, let me help you out. Take it are your son, Benjamin Cartwright. My sons. Stop that. What? The pounding. Doctor, just how, how serious is this? Well, it's hard to say. He has a very painful foot there. Better keep him off his feet, uh, oh, several days at least. You know, a man of his years, it's hard to say how really serious it could be. Well, we'll do all we can for him, Doctor. I know my way out, Ben. Good night. Good night, boys. Thank you for coming, Doctor. Well. 
Well, now you know how he is as a result of your... Ten-year-old schoolboys would show more sense. Do you realize that... Will you stop that pounding? Do you realize that man started with nothing on his back but his clothes? He accomplished everything strictly on his own? I wanted to show him what we've done with the Ponderosa. I wanted him to meet my sons. Well, he has. I don't know what's gotten into the three of you lately. Dad, burn it, Paul. We've been working for two weeks in mud belly deep to a tall cow. It's rained dang near every day. Yeah, when it didn't snow. We haven't been in Virginia City for almost a month. Personally, I'm sick of the Ponderosa right now. Oh, you are, are you? Well, you listen to me, young man. I still run this ranch. I'm still your father. And as long as you continue to live on the Ponderosa, you'll do exactly as I say. And that includes volunteering to perform any errands or business deals Mr. Milbank has been forced to delay while he recuperates. And we're going up and tell him so right now. waken you. No. I was having a little trouble dropping off. Well, Jedediah, the uh, boys have been worrying about your affairs, and they insist that you let them take care of whatever business you came out here for. Huh. Well, that's very thoughtful. As a matter of fact, there are a few little things Well, I suppose they might handle it. Oh, of course they can. Why, each one of them has taken care of the Ponderosa by himself on occasion. Oh, I don't want to take any of them away from his work. No, 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 no. We insist. Well, never put off till tomorrow what you can do today. Here we are. Let's see. Yes. Exactly three little items that need attention. Well, Joe. Here's a small piece of land I own. Been hanging on to it until the railroad realizes they need it for a watering stop. I had word of squatters moved onto it. Let one in. Next thing your property is overrun. Think you can chase them off, son? Yes, sir, Mr. Milbank. I think I can chase him off. <laughs> Boss? There's a small ranch on this map. It's located exactly at the spot I need for a fattening station for my cattle. I've made out a bill of sale in advance. All you have to do is fill in the correct amount. I'll pay a lot more than the land's worth. Buy it. Yes, sir. I'll get it, Mr. Milbank. Now, this is a little different. I sold a nice little ranch here. A couple paid me half. The rest supposed to be paid a certain amount each year. Payment's overdue. I want the ranch back. Evict them. Well, why don't you give them a little more time? Maybe they'll come up with the money. I've given them enough time. Time waits for no man. Evict them. Well, Jedediah, they... you can relax now. Everything is being taken care of. <laughs> yes, men. Friends in need are friends indeed. We'll be lucky and drown. Well, at least I won't have to put up with you two for a couple of days. Well, do a good job, boys. Good luck. Thanks, Thank Bob. you, Bill. We'll need it.
Hello? Count to five. One, two, three, four, five. Howdy, stranger. <laughs> You're a sight for sore eyes. <laughs> I come up from the creek as soon as I seen you crossing it. Uh, Parley is my name, and welcome. <laughs> I don't get much company up here. Why, why, this is the first chance I've had to chin with a soul in weeks. <laughs> now, you know who this property belongs to? No, who? Jedediah Milbank. Nice name. Now, well, he's from San Francisco, and he doesn't like squatters overrunning his property. Jedediah? Well, well that's a Bible name, ain't it? Well, I guess so. <laughs> it must come from a nice family. You know, folks don't read the Bible like they used to. I still do. Well, you can tell him that I'll, I'll watch out for his place for him while he's busy up there to San Francisco. Well, no, no, no. He wants you to get off his property. He does? What for? Because it's his, not yours. Now you gotta get off. He planning on using it? He gonna farm it, maybe? No, he's not gonna farm it. He's, he's gonna wait and sell it to the railroad. <laughs> well, that's the difference in folks. I look at this land, I see tall meadow grass and pretty spring poppies and that... Nice little crick over there, running along, snickering at the white-tailed deer that come down to drink. And Jedediah Milbank, all he sees is something to sell to the railroads. Bible name, too. Well, all I'd like to see is you packing your things and getting off the property. Uh, you got a badge? Uh, I don't see it. Uh, you a sheriff? No. No, I haven't got a badge. But I got a gun. And I don't want to have to use it. Now, that's a right smart idea, son. What man can get himself killed using a thing like that? Now, I said I don't want to have to use it, but I'm not going to spend the whole day passing time with a stubborn, cantankerous old squatter. Stubborn? Cantankerous? Me? What? You ain't said a neighborly word. Let's uh, get the blazes off of here is the way you pass a time of day. All right. All right, I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I, I didn't put it to you the way you'd like. But I made it plain. Get off the property! No, I just as soon not. What did you say? Uh, I just as soon not. Now look, old man, I'm sick and tired of arguing. Now get your things and get off the land. Son, you move too fast. You gotta learn to relax so you can think about what you're doing. Oh no. Oh no, I know what I'm doing. Hey, look, cut me down, will you? <laughs> hey! Hey, look! Cut me down, will you? Hey! <laughs> Cut me I down, will you? I didn't mean that bear trap for you. Why, well, I just put it there to keep the bear out of my tote sack. Well, fine, then let me down. <laughs> now, listen, you you just got to learn to relax. Why, it's the best thing in the world for you. The, the blood will all rush to your head and refresh your mind. Ooh. Why, I ain't doing this land no harm. There's plenty of fish, fresh game for the shooting, wood for a fire, water. Well, the land gives a man everything he needs, just as a good Lord intended it. Hey, please cut me down. It's making me dizzy. Hey, come on. Look up at the sky, son. Look up at the sky. You had your mind on little things. Look up at the sky. How could I possibly look at the sky? Oh, hey, come on, cut me down. Now, I don't want you to think that I don't appreciate your coming to visit me, but uh, you're a kind of a strong-minded boy. You, you just got to learn to relax. Oh, well, hey, come on, uh, cut me down. Think it over, and I'll be back. You, you what? Oh, hey, hey, no. See how anybody can trade this beautiful blue sky and warm sun for a mess of greenbacks and silver. Okay, okay, old man. You got me sold on the sun, the sky, and the wind. But I've been sitting here for over an hour, and I haven't even got a nibble yet. I've been telling you, boy, you got a nervous hand on that pool, and the fish know it. Look, you just have to learn how to relax. But how can I relax with you catching all the fish? <laughs> well, I'll tell you, son. You know what day it is? No. 
It's the first day of spring, that's what it is. Yeah, so what about it? What about it? What means that you can forget about the rain and the snow of winter and start enjoying living again? You know, I never thought about it that way, old man. You know, maybe that's because I've never been hung upside down before so I could think straight. <laughs> oh, boy, boy, you got one. You got one. Hey! Hey! Hey, did you ever did you ever see a fish like that in your whole life? No, boy. I ain't never seen a fish like that ever before. Fresh, tender trout, fried nice and crisp with hot biscuits. Mm -hmm, let's go. Well, wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait, what for? Yeah, now you, you gotta learn to relax, old man. Look, if you're as hungry as I am, we ought to stay a while and catch another one. Unless, of course, you're in a hurry. <laughs> no, boy. I ain't no hurry. <laughs> Here, put him on a string. <laughs> Ooh, what a fish. <laughs> will get better. We'll paint the house. I'll make some furniture and the baby will be company for you soon. We tried it. We came out here to the middle of nowhere to be farmers instead of city people. Close to the land you said was close to God, but it just didn't work. Look, this isn't a home. This is a shack. The other things came first. We knew that. You agreed. Oh, yes, but I know enough to admit a mistake. This has been a terrible year, Paul. We never see anyone. We never have any time for anything but plowing and building and clearing the land. Annie, this will be a good place someday. Everything we've done will be worth it. It's beautiful here. It'll be a good way to live. Oh, it never will. Paul, that man came here last night out of the blue. And he is offering us every cent we paid for this place, plus a $300 profit. Now, why can't you just thank God and take it? You can't buy the way I feel about this place. That's what you said to me last summer. Remember? Here you are, ma'am. Sit down, Mr. Cartwright. It's ready. <clears throat> it sure does smell good. Bread, fresh baked. You bet. Ain't nothing smells like fresh baked bread. Paul. We thank thee for these thy gifts which we have received from thy bounty, O Lord. Amen. Well, you folks said you'd make up your mind by tonight. I reckon this is sort of a celebration dinner, ain't it? There's too much of us here. We don't want to sell. I'll tell you, old man Melbank really wants this place. He wants it for a feeding station for his cattle. He told me to pay anything I had to do to get it. He did? Yes, sir. Ain't no use in us arguing back and forth like a couple mule traders. Tell you what I'll do. I'll give you $1,000 instead of the 300 Now, that ought to be fair to you and satisfy old man Melbank. A thousand dollars. Oh, thank you. Paul, did you hear it? This place is not for sale, Mr. Cartwright. Paul. Why, it'd be like selling our, our own flesh for a thousand dollars. Paul, I didn't, I didn't mean to start. No, 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 it's nothing. I'm sorry. Please, go, go ahead and eat.
She'll uh, be all right. Having a baby all alone has been making her kind of nervous lately. Yeah. Women sort of funny like that, I reckon. Fill with your lamp. Thanks. I, uh... Is that offer still good? Yeah. Then we'll take it. Be leaving first thing in the morning. We'll need to hurry. Ain't, ain't no rush. No, we'll want to. Maybe uh, you give me a hand with the packing in the morning? Yeah, I'll help you. Cheers, Paul. Everything in the house, it wasn't nailed down. I certainly thank you, Mr. Carwright. Glad to help you. Yeah. You better get a line over that stuff, otherwise the first good rut you hit, it'll all come tumbling up the front seat with you. Thanks again. I uh, think I'll take a look around. I don't want to forget anything. Taking a walk and look what I found, Paul. Aren't they sweet? So that's where she's been. She must have been hiding them someplace at three or four weeks old. Look at them, so tiny. Oh, I'm not scared anymore, Paul. That sounds silly, but I just feel different. It's the morning. You always feel good in the morning. Oh, I found something else in the back of the barn. Look. Violets. Violets are for a man to give to a woman, not vice versa. Oh, Paul. Oh, I don't want to go anymore. I just want to have a dozen children and stay right here on our own farm for the rest of our lives. What are we going to do? I don't know. I, I signed the bill of sale this morning. Oh, you've got to make him give it back, Paul. I really want it more than anything in the whole world. Well, I ain't going to give it to you. Tell you what I will do. I'll make you a trade. Trade for what? I'll trade you this bill of sales for that puppy your wife's got. Never was a very sharp trader, no one. Thank you. Coming. Company? I wonder who. Now, isn't that just like a woman? Wanting to know something before she can possibly know. <laughs> Better set another plate. Man coming in this time of day will be hungry. Ted, 
There's not enough for another person. Well, we'll just stretch what we got, then. It's already stretched. Now, a man coming in this late's got a right to expect something to eat. Now, we'll not let him go hungry in our house, huh? Howdy. Howdy. Adam Cartwright. Ted Hackett. You're just in time to set for supper. Well, thanks. You look tired. You come all the way from town? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a long way. Sure is. Come on in. Mama? This is Adam Cartwright. Hello. And this is my boy, Ray. Ray? My daughter, Barbara. Barbara? Well, you uh, get some of that trail dust off of you, and I'll go out and take care of your horse. You know, it isn't often we get somebody out here to share Mr. some of Hackett. good... I think you ought to know that I was sent out here by Jedediah Milbank. Well, man can't talk business on an empty stomach. You go ahead and have your supper. And we'll talk later. Well, you say so? Thank you. Ma? You can go ahead and serve supper now. I don't want you to worry none about me not eating. I've... Had a kind of an upset stomach lately. Touch of colic, I reckon. I can't keep nothing down. Now, you kids, mind your manners. I'll go put your horse away. Hackett's Folly. That's what I called him. I figured a prize bull would give me a prime herd and pay for himself in the long run. Well, that's what we've done on the Ponderosa. Improve the stock. He was a fine animal. Then with the late snows, bear came down out of the hills. Got a hold of old Folly in his pen one night and broke his neck. Yeah, we lost a lot of cattle to mountain lions. Worst winter we ever had. I uh, heard the ruckus. Went out and got the bear, but, well, he's the most expensive beef we've eaten around here in a long time. Cost good money. Every cent we made on the crops for the past two years. And that did it, huh? That's just the beginning. We still figured we were ahead of the ten calves old Folly sired for us. Then with the bad winter, I had to buy feed for him. Then all but two of them drowned when the spring thaw flooded the creek. Well, look, maybe if I told Mr. Milbank what happened... No, no. One of the things we liked about this place when we bought it was that it had a good windmill and a pump. We could always irrigate 10 acres if a dry spell come along. Pump broke and it takes $200 to get a new one. Why don't you fix the old one? Even if we could fix it, we need a new cylinder and... We can't even afford that. We were ambitious. Probably tried to do too much. Without setting anything away for a, a rainy day. We hate losing the place. We're not going to cry about it. No, sir. My name's Theodore. Theodore stands for the gifts of God. The good Lord's given me plenty of his gifts in my day, and I'm sure not going to start complaining when he takes a few of them away from me. Well, I guess I better look to the stock before I turn in. I'm sorry the only thing I got to offer you is the loft to sleep in. He's looking for his tobacco in his pockets. He used to smoke in that smelly old thing like a stove. Well, I'm not as proud as he is. Do you have any tobacco on you, Mr. Cartwright? That man wouldn't buy himself none in over a month. No, ma'am, I don't. A man shouldn't have to do that. Not my man.
you doing? Well, that pump of yours sure was smashed up. I got most of it back together. You've been working on the pump? Eh, I couldn't sleep last night. Well, I thought I'd take a look at it. You'll have to drop everything else for a couple of days and help me out. But, uh, like I told you last night, even if we could fix the pump, I... We gotta have a new cylinder and we can't afford that. Well, I'm gonna go to town for the cylinder. You can, uh, finish putting all this back together. But... Ted? What's the matter? Just a minute, Mama. Go ahead, speak what's on your mind. All right. Now listen and don't interrupt. I'm gonna sell those two calves you got left, because you're gonna be too busy handling a double crop. What do you mean, a double crop? Well, I got a plan that'll let you irrigate twice as many acres. I worked half the night on it. And I just forget about Mr. Milbank and the bank, too, huh? No. I'll take care of both of them. You can pay me when you catch up. No. I've given a lot of favors in my day, and I'm not too proud to take them, but not this. We made our mistakes, and we'll pay for them, not you. I'm not paying, Mr. Haggett. I'm sharing. It's springtime, Ted. A time for beginning things, not ending them. I'm surprised that we run across a little tobacco, too. just felt like it. I've been thinking. Got a big house here. Lots of space. Plenty of rooms. Oh, it's a, it's a comfortable house. Oh, such a big house, just for four men. <laughs> Do you ever think about letting rooms out to travelers? Oh, no, no, Teddy. I would never think of doing a thing like that. Well, just a suggestion, just a suggestion. You know, Idle hands of the devil's workshop. Well, I know you're anxious to get back to work. I'll do what I can with this. Oh, no need for anything like that. Now, Ben, you know I'm not the sort of man to sit around twiddling my thumbs. I know a ranch like this needs lots of attention, especially with your boys away. Oh, they'll be, they'll be back in a day or so. I'm glad you came here, Jedediah. Set him a good example. Well, come on. Let's make hay while the sun shines. Chores won't get done standing around. I'll go get my coat. Worth doing is worth doing well. Why aren't we finished the rest of the pile?
That's deep enough, Ben. <laughs> Ben, I wish I had a couple of hands like you on my spread. Two good days' work like this would have the place in pretty good order. Jedediah. Jedediah. Ah, well, Mr. Milbank. Well, a real nice job stacking those poles. Yeah, well, we didn't have too much to do while they were gone. Chase that squatter off my land, did you, boy? Hi, I, I got a trap this big. Oh, yeah? It mel melted in your mouth like butter. Yeah. <laughs> Went fishing? No squatters? Yeah, well, yeah, there was one. A man named Parley. A real nice fellow, and he's gonna keep an eye on your land for you, Mr. Milbank, so you haven't got a thing to worry about. Uh, Joseph, you mean there was someone on the property, and there's still someone on the property? Yeah, but he, he wasn't doing any harm, Pa. Not doing any uh, harm. Jedediah, Jedediah, hold on a moment. Now, Joseph, perhaps it'd be best if you would explain. Hi. Oh, little bank, Joe. So you got them all stacked up. Neat and pretty, too. Yeah, uh, horse, uh, uh, how did you make out, son? Did you get that land that Jedediah wants? Well, did you buy that property or didn't you? Well, Hoss. Well, Paul, I reckon them folks are just a little sharper traders than me. Well, I told you I wanted that land. How much extra did they want for it? A thousand? Two thousand? Well, what did they demand, Hoss? Well, Dad Bernie, Paul, they didn't demand nothing. They just flat didn't want to sell that land, that's all. They offered you a bribe. The scoundrel took a bribe, that's what he did. They're trying to hold me up. It's a plot, it's a plot. That's right, that's what I done, I, I took a bribe. I knew it, I knew it. Hoss, what'd they give you? I'll show you. <laughs> Ain't he cute? <laughs> It's a good even job of stacking you're doing there. Yeah, uh, tell me, Adam, did you uh, have any trouble at all? Uh, no, no, not at all. Ah, yeah, good. you're the oldest, the only one with a head on his shoulders. Where'd you get the pup, Hoss? Well, Adam, uh, why, why don't you give uh, Jedediah the deed? Oh, I didn't get it, Pa. They paid the installments. With what? Where'd they get the money? For me. I'm sorry, Pa. I had to do it. They needed it. And Cartwright, you, 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 you chewed us. I, 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 you jackal, you father of jackals. Now, calm down, Jeff. Calm down. First, they heave a log on my Well, foot. that was simply an accident. An accident. You, Ben Cartwright, are the worst of a poor lot. Oh, Jed, I... I always said, like father, like son. You, sir. You've sired a litter of lazy, shiftless whelps. <laughs> like father, like son. <laughs> Lazy, shiftless whelps better get back to work. Boys, it's been a long, tough, hard winter. Smell that fresh air. Feel that warm sun. It's spring. Ponderosa can take care of itself. 
I'm going to town. Oh, what are you up to? Father like son. 